Well, a blessed Friday, dear saints. Thanks for joining us Friday, the 21st of May today, as we gather again in the book of Grumbling, in the book of Numbers. Uh, Easter 7 today, we're in that week. The psalm is Psalm 78, 9 through 16, and we are in, chapters tw- in chapter 20 of the book of Numbers. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, hear the word of the psalmist this morning. The Ephraimites, armed with the bow, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant, but refused to walk according to his law. They forgot his works and the wonders that he had shown them. In the sight of their fathers he performed wonders. In the land of Egypt, in the fields of Zoan, he divided the sea and he let them pass through it, and he made the waters stand like a heap. In the daytime he led them with a cloud. And all the night with fiery light, he split rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. He made streams come out from the rock and caused waters to flow down like rivers. It's a a great psalm of recounting, a great song, psalm of remembering, as Israel is again reminded what God has done. We hear in the book of Numbers all of the grumbling and occasionally we just need to be brought back and say, look what your Lord has done. He brought you out from being slaves. He brought you through the water and he piled the water up on both sides so that you could be brought through on dry ground. He fed you. He watered you. He brought water out of the rock. And that's what we'll see in the Old Testament reading for today from Numbers chapter 20. And the people of Israel, the whole congregation, came into the wilderness of Zin in the first month, and the people stayed in Kadesh. And Miriam died there and was buried there. Now there was no water for the congregation, and they assembled themselves together against Moses and Aaron. And the people quarreled with Moses and said, Would that we have had perished, would that we had perished when our brothers perished before the Lord. Why have you brought this assembly of the Lord into the wilderness, that we might die here, both we and our cattle? And why have you made us come up out of Egypt to bring us to this evil place? It is no place for grain or figs or vines or pomegranates, and there is no water to drink. Then Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the entrance of the tent of meeting and fell on their faces. And the glory of the Lord appeared to them. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the staff and assemble the congregation, you and Aaron, your brother, and tell the rock before before their eyes to yield its water, so that you shall bring water out of the rock for them and give them drink to the congregations and their cattle. And Moses took the staff from before the Lord as he commanded him. Then Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly before the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels, shall we bring water for you out of the rock? And Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock with his staff twice. And water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank and their livestock. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe in me, to uphold me as holy in the eyes of the people of Israel. Therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land that I have given them. These are the waters of Meribah, where the people of Israel quarreled with the Lord. And through them he showed himself holy. Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom. Thus says your brother Israel, You know all of the hardships that we have met. How our fathers went down to Egypt and lived in Egypt a long time, and the Egyptians dealt harshly with us and our fathers. And we cried, and when we cried to the Lord, he heard our voice and sent an angel 
and brought us up out of Egypt. And here we are at Kadesh, on the city, on the edge of your territory. Please let us pass through your land. We will not pass through field or vineyard or drink water from a well. We will go along the king's highway. We will not turn aside to the right hand or to the left until we have passed through your territory. But Edom said to him, You shall not pass through, lest I come out with the sword against you. And the people of Israel said to him, We will go up by the highway, and if we drink of your water, I will pay, I and my livestock, then I will pay for it. Let me only pass through on foot, nothing more. But he said, You shall not pass through. And Edom came out against them with a large army and with a strong force. Thus Edom refused to give Israel's passage through this territory, so Israel turned away from him. This is the word of the Lord. The word or the thought of a spoiled child comes to mind when we hear Israel, the nation, now freed from Egypt, when we hear them speaking to Moses and then speaking to the Lord. Here again, they are grumbling against Moses and against Aaron. And their grumbling is a grumbling that does not account for who they are or take into consideration what they have done. The grumbling, and why have you made us come up out of Egypt to bring us into this place of evil? You see, Egypt was no great place for them. They were slaves. They had to work very hard. Now, a lot of things were provided for them, but certainly not things, great things things to keep them in servitude and to keep them pushed down. And yet, they make it sound like it was Moses who brought them from something that was great into something that was terrible. Do you see the selfishness? Not taking responsibility for their own actions? None of them would have had to go. They could have stayed outside that night when the angel of death passed over. They could have taken their chances with God, but they didn't. When God was working and they needed rescue, they wanted to be rescued. And then after that, they still want to do it their own way. And it doesn't work that way. We see that clearly. The people grumbled against Moses. And Moses, frankly, had had enough. They didn't have any water. So God says to Moses, they, he will give them water. Take the, the rock there and tell the rock to produce the water. That's what God said to Moses. And we know that God said to tell the rock, and if Moses would have told the rock, the rock would have sprouted forth water. But instead, Moses in his frustration, Moses in his anger, Moses wanting to show this people that he really was God's, did not do what God told him to do. Instead of speaking to the rock, he took his staff and he hit the rock twice probably pretty hard out of anger of this rebellious and grumbling people. And the water did exactly what God promised it would do. It burst forth and all the springs from the ground came out and the people were watered and their cattle were watered. But there was a consequence for the disobedience. The consequence was Moses, who had been leading this people since God called him into service, would not be able to enter into the promised land. We'll find out from the end of the book of, of Numbers that he's able to just stand on the hill and look forward and look into the land. And there he will die. There are consequences when we don't follow God's word. We can't just make up a doctrine that we like. We can't just say, I don't think that's the way I'm going to do it this way. God's word is clear. He gives us very clear definition about how we should do things and how important those things are. He tells us that he gives us water. Excuse me. In the water of baptism, he gives us forgiveness of sins, and that's a reality. He tells us that in the Lord's Supper, he gives us Jesus' true, very true body and blood for us for the forgiveness of sins. He promises us that the right preaching of God's word is powerful and effective. He gives us faith to believe. He gives us forgiveness of sins through word and water and the very blood of Jesus. He gives us the commandments to tell us what's right and what's wrong. 
and yet we continue to want to say that's not what he meant, that's not what God meant, we'll do it our own way. And we see the consequences. We have over and over again with Korah and his rebellion, his family dying, the people, the chiefs of the tribes that came out dying, 14,700 people from the, the Israel nation died as they came out against Moses. We see the consequences of our sin. Our Lord promises that he walks with us. He promises that his word is right and true. He promises that his word is good for us and that we should trust his word in all things. Where we don't, we repent, which is trusting his word. We depend upon the blood of Jesus that washes over us and forgives us and continues to give us the strength to go on, trusting in God and his word, which is good for us. At the end, we have this story of uh, how Edom refused Israel passage through. Israel, making its way to the promised land, wanted the shortest route. And God now keeping his promise that everyone that from the age of uh, uh, I forget now, back a few chapters, everyone that grumbled against Moses when they were going to, they sent the spies into the promised land, that generation would die. And God now keeping his promise, having Israel wander around in this land until that generation has died, refusing passage through this land, causing them to go a different way. Well, this is the word of the Lord for today from Numbers, the book of grumbling. I pray that today we not grumble, but give our Lord thanks for the abundant blessings that he has given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> we pray. Oh, excuse me. A catechetical review today takes us to the Apostles' Creed, the first article. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all that I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or forgiveness merit or worthiness in me. For all of this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. Those first article gifts are certainly what God gave to Israel right here, coming out of the rock. He gave them water to drink at his own command for them to continue to sustain them. First article gifts, we pray. Father, we thank you again for this day. And we thank you for the gifts that you give to us of life and health and daily bread. We pray, dear Father, you would continue to strengthen us with your good gifts. We pray, Father, that you would give us the ability to, to learn and to know and to trust your word. Not to take your word and twist it so that it fits what we want, but to have our lives and bodies be conformed to live as you want. Father, we pray that you would kill the old selfishness in us, that as this new person arises out of the waters of baptism, that we would continue to trust in you and all that you have given to us. Strengthen us this day, dear Father, in all that we do. Hear us for the sake of Jesus in the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, have an enjoyable weekend this weekend. I pray that you would join us at worship. 8 o'clock on Sunday morning, Bible study in between, and then also 10.30 again for the second service. Go in his peace. Thanks be to God.